In this video, I'm going to be covering the plurality method. Simply put, the plurality method is the voting method that says the candidate with the most first place votes is the winner of the election. So let's revisit our math club preference schedule and let's calculate or let's figure out who is the winner using the plurality method. So using the plurality method, we need to calculate or find out how many first place votes did each of the candidates received. So for Anna, uh, it looks like it was only in this pile that she received uh, first place votes from so and, and then she received 14 place uh, first place votes from 14 people uh, for Bob so Bob uh, in this pile he this is the pile where it's the only pile where he received uh, first place votes so that's gonna be four for Bob and then for Cora in this pile sh she was she received uh, 10 first place votes but she also received one first place votes in this pile so if you combine the two she received 11 first place votes and then finally with uh, Dan it, this is the pile where he received the first place votes it's the only pile and he received eight first place votes so the winner of this election would be Anna so Anna would be the winner So Anna would be the president for this uh, using the plurality method. But uh, I want you guys to take note of something. So Anna got the most first place votes uh, of all the candidates. However, if you take a look at uh, the for the rest of them, she received in, in all the other piles, she was their least favorite candidate. And if you combine these, um, this is there's actually more people who didn't prefer her right so it's there's more people who uh, ranked her as their least favorite candidate and that's one of the weaknesses of the plurality method so the weakness is that you can have a winner using the plurality method but a, a lot of other people had that person as their least favorite candidate Right. I mean, if you just eyeball it, you can almost make an argument that perhaps uh, Cora was would have made uh, would have satisfied more um, people or the voters in general. Right. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in the later uh, videos. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, the difference between plurality versus majority because the two uh, concept or the two voc um, terms tend to get kind of um, uh, kind of missed, um, conflated. All right, so plurality we know is the, the candidate who receives the most votes, whereas the majority, a majority vote would be if you received it, a candidate received more than half the votes. So for example, in our math club election, um, majority would be if a candidate received more than 18.5 votes. Um, how did I get the 18.5? Well, first of all, you have to know how many total people or how many total voters there are, how many total ballots there are, right? And we remember from last uh, video, we can simply, we can find that by simply adding the total number of values here for the piles up right so if you add up all these values you would you'd get 37 and to get um, a majority would be more than half so half would be so let's go ahead and just do that so 37 divided by 2 so half would be 18.5 so that's how I got the 18.5 and so notice that Anna obtained a plurality we've already established that but she did not get a majority But let's say that instead of having 14 uh, ballots in this pile and 10 ballots in this pile, let's just say that there was 19 uh, in this pile and 5 in this pile. So if this was the situation, 
then Anna would have obtained a plurality and a majority, right? Plurality means she obtained the most, first place votes, which she did. She received 19. And a majority would be if she obtained more than 18.5. Again, that's half of the 37, right? Okay, so that's it for this um, uh, video. Uh, in the next three videos, uh, we're going to look at different voting methods as well. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, again, always please reach out by e shooting me an email.